came out here because somebody had heard about it. We were just sitting around a, a night and some local people that we knew had heard about this. And that supposedly it was a ghost light that came, you could almost guarantee you would be to see it. And we came out here and there was actually this guy who was doing a, um, a story on mysteries of the UP and he told us about all these mysteries that existed all over the, you know, the, the, the Upper Peninsula and the weird things that he'd seen. And uh, so it was, you know, quite an experience, especially being, you know, an undergraduate, you know, like it's the sort of thing that feeds into your imagination. A lot of people had postulated that it was car headlights, but no one provided any proof, at least not proof that satisfied anyone. Um, you know, and there was a lot of contradictory evidence. The original legend was that it was somebody uh, who had been killed by a train, a train conductor, and it was his lantern that was swinging. Um, and then it kind of made, it kind of morphed into, it was a bar fight between a train conductor and uh, somebody who was involved with the wife of, a, you know, of a, somebody else with a lumberjack or something like that, right? Even the locals know there's not, there is no train, there has been no train, this is not, if you look at the grade here, no one would ever put a train down this stretch of road, at least not in this direction. I, I think I've heard recently that Paulding is Ojibwa for uh, glowing earth or something like that. Which also is, again, you know, completely not true, right? I mean, it's probably some English guy's last name. It's quite interesting. We've had people saying there's orbs in the sky and everything. We've been able to convince them that if it's like a brake light in our case, that it's really angry at them. And we even had someone try to hike her about 12 miles back to go and find it. And pretty much everything. We've had people standing here having the pictures of the vehicles on the screen of the computer. and. It's like, well, that's it, and uh, they still won't believe it. People are going to believe what they want to believe. A lot of people say that what we will see tonight is not the real polling light. In fact, that the real polling light hasn't been seen for three plus years. And I think even what people, you know, even the more spectacular things that people have seen can probably still be explained by the same phenomenon. And that actually relates closer to what our, my actual research is, which is the interaction between light and air. Right? You watch an NFL game, you see waviness from these long shots that they take, right? Well, okay, that's over, let's say, what, uh, maybe a thousand feet maximum, right? We're talking about four, four, five, six miles here. Because that's actually a question that I had, actually, after going through my research. How is it that you can actually see the light from this distance over six or seven miles? It should be just a blur off in the distance, given, you know, what I know about turbulence. It actually shouldn't be that, you know, you can see it as clearly as you can. You're staring out through the woods here, and when it gets dark, it's black. It's pitch black. There's nothing there. There's no point of reference. You see a light, and the light is actually moving. And if you look through the telescope, you can see the light moving up the road, and then it stays steady on that long, flat piece of uh, road for a long time. That small movement, coupled in, in, in especially coupled with turbulence, which can cause um, a tilt effect, it's just like the twinkling of the stars, except, of course, you're dealing with something that's actually larger and closer to you. We originally just started out trying to see if we could visually see anything going on. We took a couple telescopes out, and after we brought the first telescope out, could clearly tell there were headlights, and we could see, obviously, two lights, and occasionally tail lights driving by. And then recently, we've been bringing out this bigger telescope. Um, been trying to get spectrometer readings, which is going to measure like the light frequencies and everything like that. Um, we've been measuring the distances between the appearances and disappearances of the cars, and we've been taking video of it as well. Hey, how are we going to do this? We sit around, we talk about how we might, might we use a spectrometer uh, to measure the spectrum of the balding light. How can we apply statistics to make a uh, um, to drive or to to show some sort of relationship between the Paulding light and what we believe to be the source of it, which is cars. That's really what this is, is more about, is to get undergraduates involved and the other graduate students, you know, working together on a project where there's not necessarily paper coming out of it, right? There's not necessarily funding attached to it. It's a, uh, it's a social slash, um, you know, uh, learning experience. You know, we need to always be trying to get the current undergraduates not necessarily just interested in going to graduate school because graduate school is there and it's a thing to do, but to want to do it because research can be fun.